subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening and welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 28th of December. India approves two new COVID vaccines, one COVID pill for emergency use. A yellow alert sounded in capital amid Omicron fear. Afghan women protest against Taliban in Kabul, demanding equal rights. A Nepal CPN, Unified Socialist and CPN, Janabadi, announce unity. And now for all the details. Amid rising cases of COVID-19 and Omicron variant in Indian capital, the Delhi government on Tuesday decided to enforce yellow alert of the Graded Response Action Plan in the city. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal urged people to follow COVID-19 protocols and said there is no need to panic because most COVID-19 cases are mild and asymptomatic. Meanwhile, India has approved two new COVID-19 vaccines and an antiviral drug for restricted use in an emergency situation. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal announced on Tuesday a yellow alert or level one of the Graded Response Action Plan will be imposed in the Indian capital after the positivity rate stayed over 0.5% for two consecutive days. Addressing a virtual briefing, Kejriwal urged people to follow COVID-19 protocols and also stated there is no need to panic because most COVID-19 cases are mild and asymptomatic. The yellow alert involves restrictions like night curfew, closure of schools and colleges, alternate day opening of shops of non-essential items and half seating capacity in metro trains and public transport buses, among others. So, 0.5 percent se zyada do tin din se chal raha hai. Uh, isi liye level one jo hai graded action plan ka usko lagu karne ka nirne liya gaya hai. Kuch chijon ke upar pabandiyan lagai ja rahi hai. Delhi is already under night lockdown restrictions since Monday. According to the Health Ministry, there are 165 Omicron cases in the national capital, just after Western Maharashtra's 167. On Monday, Delhi recorded 331 fresh COVID-19 cases, the highest single-day rise since June 9. Meanwhile, India on Tuesday approved two more vaccines under emergency use authorization and an antiviral drug Monlupiravir, Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia said in a tweet, as the country braces for a possible spike in coronavirus cases due to rapidly spreading Omicron variant. Currently, India uses Covishield Covaxin and Sputnik V in its vaccination program. India has so far administered 1.43 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses and 62% of its eligible population have received both doses. The country plans to start vaccinating those aged 15 to 18 from January 3. And scores of resident doctors in Indian capital New Delhi on Tuesday continued their protest over the delay in counselling and admission for postgraduate medical courses affecting health services at several government-run hospitals. The Doctors' Association has also called for a strike on Wednesday over police action on protesters during their march on Monday. Scores of resident doctors of government-run hospitals in Indian capital, New Delhi, on Tuesday continued to protest against the delay in national eligibility come entrance test post-graduate or need PG counselling and alleged police action over protesters during their march on Monday. Need PG is a qualifying and ranking examination in India for students who wish to study various post-graduate medical courses. The exam, scheduled in January 2021, was postponed in view of the COVID-19 pandemic and was later held on September 12. However, the counselling and admission process for the postgraduate students who also work as junior doctors has still not begun due to clutch of pending court cases. We have come to the strike that the need counselling was in 2021. In June, our doctors have come to the new doctors. अभी तक काउंसलिंग तक हुई नहीं है तो और डॉक्टर्स भी नहीं है ऑलरेडी हमारे पास जितने डॉक्टर है बच्चे कुछ है वो बहुत कम है ओवरवर्क्ड है 
health services at several government hospitals were affected due to the protest on Tuesday, causing inconvenience to patients and their relatives. An association of resident doctors has now called for a strike on December 29, including the shutdown of all non-emergency services if no adequate response from the government is received. Also, women's rights were severely curtailed during the Taliban's previous stint in power in Afghanistan in the 1990s. And since regaining control of the country, the government's recent actions suggest that the Islamic fundamentalist group is reverting to its previous form. The latest one is denying long-distance travel for women without male relative. Dozens of Afghan women staged a protest in Kabul on Tuesday demanding their rights under the Taliban rule. Dozens of Afghan women staged a protest in Kabul on Tuesday demanding their rights under the Taliban rule. The women marched down the streets chanting, Why have you closed schools? And we want work, food and education. The protest followed a new Taliban decree on women's rights issued by the Ministry of Promotion of Virtue and Prevention of Vice on Sunday that dictates women's travelling for more than 72 kilometres or 45 miles should be accompanied by a male family member. During its previous rule from 1996 to 2001, the Taliban banned women from leaving the house without a male relative and full face and head covering and girls from receiving education and have severely limited employment opportunities for women. The Taliban say they have changed and are working on getting more girls back to school after allowing high schools for girls in some provinces to open. But many women and rights advocates remain skeptical. The Taliban has been under pressure from the international community who have mostly frozen funds for Afghanistan to commit to upholding women's rights since the hardline Islamist group took over the country on August 15. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's top security panel on Monday approved its national security policy for 2022-26, to placing economic security at the core of the first of its kind document to ensure a citizen-centric approach to security. Prime Minister Imran Khan termed it a historic moment for the country. Pakistan's NSC National Security Committee, the highest forum for coordination on security issues, on Monday approved the country's national security policy for 2022-26, placing economic security at the core of the first-of-its-kind document to ensure a citizen-centric approach to security. The policy was presented and approved at the 36th meeting of the NSC chaired by Prime Minister Imran Khan. National Security Advisor Moid Yusuf presenting the document said Pakistan was shifting to a comprehensive national security framework, the ultimate purpose of it being safety, security and dignity of citizens. Terming the NSP's formulation and approval a historic moment, PM Khan noted that the policy must guide all organs of the government to ensure that their efforts are synchronized with the overall direction of the NSP. The draft puts economic and military security at the core of policy and outlines the challenges and opportunities facing Pakistan in the coming years. Aside from the military and economic issues, the document throws light on Pakistan's water security as well as population growth, terrorism and foreign policy. The NSP will now be presented to the cabinet before being officially adopted. And moving on, locals in Giza Valley of Gilgit, Baltistan have lamented the tourism sector in the region is suffering badly due to poor roads and lack of accommodation facilities. They blame the Pakistan government has left all sections of the society at their own mercy and they are struggling with the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. The remote Himalayan region of Gilgit, Baltistan is blessed with breathtaking beauty as it features stunning valleys and crystal blue lakes. Locals have, however, claimed 
that the tourism industry in Giza Valley has been facing a severe crisis due to government's apathy to develop road and other basic infrastructure in the illegally occupied region, which has kept it out of bounds for even domestic tourists. एक्सेस होनी चाहिए जो खूबसूरत वैलीज हैं जहाँ पे टूरिस्ट को जाना चाहिए वहाँ पे रोड एक्सेस नहीं है वहाँ पे दूसरे जो फैसिलिटीज हैं बिजली का इशू है पानी का इशू है इस तरह से बहुत सारे इशूज है खासतौर पर रोड का प्रॉब्लम है मीन वाइल अलॉट ऑफ लोकल रेजिडेंट है ओपनिंग फिशरी फार्म फॉर सर्वाइवल सेड दैट ट्राउट फिशिंग विच एट्रैक्टेड अ लॉट ऑफ विजिटर्स हैजो बिन हिट हार्ड अमिट दी कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडमिक मगर फिशरीज डिपार्टमेंट इस वक्त जो प्राइवेट फार्मर्स है उनके साथ कोई ताउन नहीं कर रहा है जिसकी वजह से फार्मर्स इस वक्त सख्त मुश्किल का शिकार है कोविड की वजह से गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में सियाहत का जो शोबा है वो जवाल पजीर हो चुका है इस पर तोजु देने की जरूरत है ताकि लोकल्स ब्लेम इस्लामाबाद इन डिफरेंट एटीट्यूड टूवर्ड्स द रीजन है सोसाइटी शॉपकीपर्स एंड अदर स्मॉल बिजनेस इन द रीजन are also struggling with the economic fallout from the pandemic and moving on to news from nepal the cp and unified socialist led by madhav kumar nepal and nepal communist party janabadi led by devendra singh mahat announced unity of the two parties at a special event held in kathmandu on tuesday in august nepal's largest communist party cp and uml had faced a split with madhav kumar nepal ending a long standing feud with uml chairman kp sharma oli and forming his new party cpn Unified Socialist. Meanwhile, Mahat had formed his party in 2015 after parting ways with CPN Maoist Center led by Pushp Kamal Dehel. The unification is likely to put incumbent Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diaba in a stronger position as Madhav Kumar Nepal is amongst his coalition partners. And Buddhist monks in India's eastern pilgrimage town of Bodh Gaya performed traditional mask dance Cham with an aim to ward off evil spirits and spread peace around the world. Buddhist monks at a Buddhist monastery in India's eastern pilgrimage town of Bodh Gaya performed mass dance and prayed to gods on Monday for world peace and warding off evil spirits. Dressed in colorful costumes, the monks also played traditional musical instruments like drums and cymbals while dancing. Each dance or charm begins with a deliberate slow movement of the feet with the rhythm picking up with the increasing tempo of the drums. The program will continue for 3 days. According to beliefs the vibration of traditional instruments and the appearance of mask scare the evil spirits and bring happiness and peace. ये हम लोग ये डांस जो है ये धार्मिक का है धार्मिक का चीज है इसमें हम लोग और सुबह दो बजे से उठ के पूजा करता है पूजा करके ये सब जो अभी हम लोग देखा है जो ये सब धार्मिक का चीज़ है ये पिछमा शांति होने के लिए हम लोग को अभी अभी के हम लोग को दुख को मिटाने के लिए The Bhutan Monastery kept the celebrations low key this year banning the entry of visitors and devotees because of corona virus scare Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again India approves two new covid vaccines one covid pill for emergency use a yellow alert sounded in capital amid omicron fear Afghan women protest against Taliban in Kabul demanding equal rights and Nepal CPN unified socialist and CPN Janabadi announce unity Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.